Hello and welcome to Property Ladder, the series that follows first-time developers as they put their money where their mouth is and try to make profit from property. After 20 years of brotherly bickering, twins Mark and Mitch Parsons left Upper London in Staffordshire to go their separate ways. Mitch became a landscape gardener, and Mark moved from mobile disco to running a bingo hall. Another 20 years on, and they've returned home together with dreams of developing property. He's 20 minutes younger, but he's taller than I am, and he does whack a punch as well. So, uh, me being small and delicate like a rose, uh, he, I do get uh, taken advantage of. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Um, we've got quite a volatile and a relationship, I suppose. Um, we tend to, if anything goes off, it'll go off big time. Their first project is close to home. They're converting the disused barn in their mum's garden into a three-bedroom, three-bathroom home before renting it out. But they've no experience. And they're using their mother's savings to do it. There's a lot riding on, on myself and my brothers handling it. So if it goes pear-shaped, then, you know, it's, a, it's our full bottom line. Well, yeah, if it goes wrong, it goes drastically wrong because we would have to then consider selling the barn on in the state it's in. It then means that we may have to sell the main house because we haven't got an income on my mother's side to support it. There is a lot riding on it. The barn has great potential. It's within easy reach of Birmingham and Coventry, and it's in the middle of the countryside set in its own garden with spectacular views. But this is not an easy development. Even though it's not listed, there are strict planning restrictions on what you can do with buildings like this. Mark and Mitch are not allowed to add any more windows and doors or change the basic structure. But if they get it right, then there is money to be made. So do you know how much this barn's worth then? We're looking at probably 150,000. Yeah, that's a good estimate. Yeah. And what, what do you plan on spending turning into a house? 50,000. You're budget. convinced you'll spend only 50,000? Uh, that's um, what the budget is. How did you reach this figure of 50,000? Uh, um, architect uh, estimation, my own walking around it, thinking, well, this is going to take so much, that's going to take so much, uh, get the building structurally sound so much. So we've got a, a pretty ballpark figure of 50,000 is what we're looking to right. um, convert it. £50,000 is not nearly enough in my view. The twins have allocated £8,000 for all their materials. £22,000 for fixtures and fittings. Only £5,000 for all their labour. £5,000 for the new kitchen. £3,000 for the three bathrooms and a downstairs loo. £2,000 to landscape and plant the garden. And they have a £5,000 contingency fund giving their total of £50,000. And you're planning on renting it out once it's done, aren't you? Yes, that's right, yes. What do you reckon you'll get as an income? Uh, we're looking at 12000 a year. Yeah, um, yeah, I'll yeah. be happy with 12000 yeah, 12, yeah. The, the bottom figure will be 12000 a year. The property is currently worth £150,000. They've got £50,000 of their mother's savings to do all the work. If they earn £1,000 a month in rental, this will only give them a yield of 6%. So Mark and Mitch will have to watch every penny, otherwise their yield will fall. When developing, you should aim for a minimum yield of 6% on your rental property. But on a big renovation like this, you ideally want more, around 8%. To work out what the yield will be, divide 100 by your total investment. That's 200,000 for the twins. Then multiply the result by your estimated annual rent, £12,000 for the twins. And that gives you your percentage yield. So what's the plan? What are you doing in here? You've got living room in here. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a lounge, sitting room. We're taking that wall out there, so we're having an all open plan. So this will be a great kind of L-shaped... Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That, that's the idea, is to get as much natural light coming into there from this angle and from natural light from that angle. Getting the layout right is absolutely crucial, but it's not going to be easy. 
In fact, it can be more difficult working around what's already there than it would be starting from scratch. The twins are knocking the barn and a small outbuilding together to make a three-bedroom, three-bath house. Downstairs, at one end, there'll be a dining room, leading through a hall with a small utility room and loo, through the kitchen, and into an L-shaped living area with another hall. This is the front hall. Right. Yeah, this is going to be the hall for the first point of access, really, to uh, visitors. Right. Uh, that's what we wanted. And the front door's coming in here. Yes, that's and right. why are you having a hallway? It's to, well, the hallway is to give us a bridge between the living room and the front, front door. door. But there's another doorway here. Yeah, that's, we're keeping that because of, because it's there. <laughs> <laughs> keeping that <laughs> because, because it's there. there. The second front door leads into a second hall. And the idea at the moment is that off that, there's the kitchen, a loo, a utility area and dining room. But that might easily change. We're going to play with it because that, that's what we're doing. Because we're going to try and see what it looks like, and if it doesn't work. So the only danger with that is that it's all very well saying that you've got this X amount of money to spend. You've got fifty thousand. You want to stick to that, and that's what you're going to spend. If you don't get organised at the beginning, yeah, trust me, it will cost you more money. I suppose we're not really conscious. But layout decisions aren't the only things that Mark and Mitch have still got to agree on. What kind of style is the inside of the house? Have you got any ideas about the finish? Is it going to be rustic look? Or... Um, it's we're... going to be a formal dining area. Would well, you say formal? Well, no, it's a formal area. Yeah, so yeah. you've gone from formal to informal in colours and stuff like no, that. Well, so no, I don't, no, I don't agree. Work. I would like to see a bit more formality in the dining room area. But nothing too strong where you've got a minimalistic look or you've got a contemporary look or you've got a traditional look. It's going to be Keep quite formal. So I don't know whether, I don't know whether that, will, that will work. Well, we, well, we've just got to see and um, we're not sure if we're going to use wallpaper or just paint again. Oh, no, we're not having wallpaper. So, okay, well... Is that exciting? Yeah, that's <laughs> just something. <laughs> yes. this, is, this is our decision making. <laughs> that's my decision. <laughs> yes. uh, Upstairs, Mark and Mitch have agreed on the layout. Unfortunately, I think they've got it wrong. They're planning to create three bedrooms, each with an ensuite, but no family bathroom. So you've got three bedrooms and three bathrooms up here? Yeah, yeah that's right. Do you not think that maybe you don't need to have three bedrooms all with ensuite? And, and I mean, I agree, you obviously need a master bedroom with the ensuite bathroom, mm, right. but the other two bedrooms would be much better sharing a family bathroom because this space up here, when you to fit a a uh, staircase coming up and a bedroom and a bathroom is going to be quite a squeeze. Quite, quite, yeah. And actually, if you've got two children, you need a bath to bath children. Children yeah. don't right. shower, little ones. Mm. And you don't want them to be able to go into their own bathroom. So you're limiting yeah. your market to older teenagers or people who don't have young children. Right, yes. Limiting their market is unwise, and it's not the only poor decision they're making. They want to create a master bedroom by knocking a large door between these two small rooms at the front. In one they'll put the bed, the other will be a dressing room and ensuite. So I don't understand why you're having the bedroom in the far room and not the bedroom in here. It's to make use of the window and the views. We've got the view over the yard, then onto the fields and then onto the borrowed landscape. But surely if you put the bed against this wall here, you'd have this vista out through the hole in the wall through the window and then you could even have the bath in the middle of the the room there also raised up also yeah. overlooking looking out mm. at, at the view yeah and it would be really luxurious and grand and maybe the clincher to make sure this is rented all the time yes. all right if they swap things around they'd still keep the view from the bed but the bathroom would make this into something really special. It's an incredibly ambitious project, considering that you have never developed a house before. Yeah. Mm. Are you sure you're able to take this on? Well, I think we've got the experience. He's got the... Well, I'm, I'm, I'm confident about the, about the project, um, because I'm confident about the building. Between the two of us, I mean, yeah, I we, 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 we've covered all angles. Mm. And what we don't know, we'll get somebody in to come and do it. Who's going to project manage this? I think we both are. <laughs> Deadly actually. silence. But Deadly I, no, si I, I would say he's going to be the majority. I think I'm going to have more to do with the trade. 
So you're going to be running the site. You're in charge on site. Um, I suppose so. Yes. Yeah. And and you're going to be in charge of finance. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So if it goes over budget, it's your fault. Yes, it will be. And and if it's not finished on time, it's your fault. Yeah, then I'll blame Mark for something. So. <laughs> 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 right. Yeah, and then, well, we can say you're kicking off already. Yeah. <laughs> so that's good to know. A few days later, materials arrive on site and the twins start their first development. But no sooner has work kicked off, and so do the arguments. But you don't change it two days before the builders are coming on us on site. Well, I did tell you a fortnight before that. No, I'm you didn't. You just size it. I did, don't you yeah. start. I'll tell you, don't you start, because I did tell you a fortnight before. <laughs> Mark and Mitch Parsons have taken a big bite for their first development. They're converting a disused barn in Staffordshire into a three-bed, three-bath home, which they want to rent out. It's supposed to be finished in just four months for just £50,000, but I personally don't think there's a hope in hell. Mitch is supposed to be project managing, and Mark is supposed to be looking after the money. And for the moment, they seem happy sticking to their roles. I think what is important is that Mitchell is actually controlling your job because when you've got two people fighting against uh, each other um, and there's no decision being made, then it, there's a problem. Mark and Mitch have to make this work. They're investing their mother's savings in the hope the rental will provide a better pension. But they've only allowed £5,000 for labour, which is simply unrealistic for a project of this scale. They think they can keep the cost down by doing as much of the work as they can themselves. But this means progress is very, very slow. Digging out the old floors and knocking through the downstairs could have been done in days. But it takes Mark and Mitch three weeks. And then Mark decides the new layout is wrong and postpones the builders for another week. You don't change it two days before the builders are coming on us on site. Well, I did tell you a fortnight before that. No, I'm you not didn't. Happy about you just the size. Of... I did. Don't you start? Yeah. I'll tell you. Don't you start? Because I did tell you a fortnight before. I'm not happy about the size of the opening. There's fundamental changes which are happening in the barn, and if you had gone your way, they would have been done, and to the detriment of the barn. <laughs> Mark wants to create a massive kitchen living area by getting rid of the hall, the utility room and the downstairs loo. Mitch is worried that these changes will slow down the entire job. But Mark is convinced he's the only one seeing the bigger picture. My biggest uh, concern with Mitchell is that he concentrates on too much on the schedule and not enough uh, attention to detail when something needs to be altered and he's he's just too focused in some cases to to the detriment of the job but mark constantly changing his mind is putting this build in danger one of the golden rules when you're starting out developing is to carefully make your plans and then stick to them unless there's a very good reason not to mark and mitch need to decide what they're going to do and then get on with doing it Otherwise, there's a risk that this project could go on and on and on. And so have you been working every hour of your sends on this one? Yes, we have. Yeah, I think yeah. you'll see a massive change when you when you just come around and see. Oh, goodness, look at that. Well, it's it started. More like a, yeah, it looks more like a building site now with it something does. going on. It started the work. It's now five weeks into this four-month development, and Mark and Mitch are supposed to have finished all the structural work in the barn. But Mark's changes to the downstairs layout have held the project back by weeks. So has anything changed in terms of your plans since the first time I came? Oh, I think everything actually, hasn't it? Yeah. Maybe I should ask, is it's, anything it's, the same as the uh, first time? More or less the... the living no, room. there isn't actually. Well, the living room's the same. Yeah, the dining no. room's the same. Yeah. Uh, the kitchen's been enlarged after much debate. There, there is a reason for this, right? Because we had the sandblasters come in. And I said, we are making a fundamental mistake in having this wall put here right whereas we could have a good open plan room and that would i think that would do justice to the building the problem is that mark and mitch don't seem to have a clear idea of what they're trying to achieve the danger is in the end this will end up costing them more and more money and every time they change their minds it creates another set of problems 
Having a larger open plan kitchen means they've lost the downstairs loo. I think if you can have a downstairs loo, mm. it, it's preferable. I mean, yeah. you, you shouldn't put it in if it's going to, to be a really big problem to the layout. Yeah. But if it's physically possible to get that downstairs loo in, I would. Mark is concerned that a downstairs loo will spoil the kitchen's open plan feel. But I think there's a solution. By moving the stairs, they could tuck a loo underneath. Upstairs, this would create enough extra space for one family bathroom, which means they could lose two of the en suites. But Mark has reservations. My only concern about um, having a stairway there and the loo there is losing this window here again. You're right, you would lose that window. Yeah. But actually, sometimes you can persuade the planners to let you move a window. They won't let you put another window in in yeah. this kind of building. But if you took that window out, you could put it in there on the end wall, which would mean that you'd, from this kitchen, you'd have this fantastic view yeah. right across the, the fields. It boils down to what the planning says, doesn't it? Absolutely. So, yeah. Which you could probably ring the planning officer who dealt with this yeah. and just run it by him initially because if he says absolutely out of the question there's no point in fighting it yeah. oh, no, yeah. you want to get on with this yeah. 24 hours later Mark and Mitch have made their decision the utility room Paul and downstairs Lou are all going another day to be fair it was we, we were well into the schedule and I was conscious of the fact that I didn't want to keep chopping and changing on on every suggestion, as as we've had loads of loads of ideas um, come in, and we seem to be, you know, going one, from one to another. Eight weeks into the development, and Mark and Mitch have hit another problem, and this one they can't sort out themselves. Looks as though like they've put the rafters on. Yeah. Um, cut all the rafters, and then obviously not realised that the building's out. They've put the steel on the external skin here. Yeah. And then sort of over on that side. Oh you know, right. On the internal. Internal. So we're pouring it all down. No. If you were going to strip the whole lot off. Yeah. And start again. Yeah. Be no problem. No problem. Although the barn was re-roofed five years ago, they've discovered it wasn't done properly. The roof is now spreading and forcing the walls out. See, so worst scenario case would be is that we take the whole roof off and start again. Yeah, or, or just this side. This, this side, side, yeah. So what, what they were thinking of when they put it in in the well, first place, I don't yeah. know. Well, oh God, no, I don't know. It's so, a couple of No, it wasn't. Uh, well, you, yeah. I told you when they put no, it in. No, 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 don't start having an argument now because I've got a stick, so yeah. watch it. Replacing the entire roof will cost money that Mark and Mitch simply don't have. So they decide to have the existing roof strengthened and supported with new steel beams. But this still costs thousands of pounds. Once the beams are in, Mark decides to try and claw back some of the money by fixing all of the rafters to the new steels himself. We had the option of uh, taking a roof off and doing it the conventional way, or we've done it this way. We anticipated there was going to be some problems, but we're sort of accounting daily problems on it. It's been quite stressful because we can't carry on with any other jobs until we sorted the roof out. But unfortunately, Mark makes mistakes and has to redo a lot of the work. Ten weeks into the development and Mark and Mitch are falling further and further behind. The difficulties and delays are now beginning to take their toll. We had an argument over the weekend about him calling me lazy. So I've told him that if, if he does it once more, then I'm off the job and he can finish the project himself. Basically, I'm, I'm fully committed to the job and I, sometimes I don't think Mark is. And it's, uh, that's where the arguments have been uh, coming from. He doesn't seem to appreciate that when, when we're spending time on a lot more time on bracing, then that, that time has been allocated elsewhere. This is hence why, you know, why we're three weeks behind with jobs. The bracing isn't holding up any it, job. It is. 
It isn't holding up any job, right? It is, because we can't get the plasterers in. No, the plasterers weren't coming in until next week anyway. No, they were going to come in this week. No, they weren't coming. They said a week and a half, right, and that was this and the second but week. But we're still not ready for it. Yeah, and they said, and he hasn't returned the call anyway. No, he's... So, he's and the biggest problem with the plasterers, right, and with, with respect... Don't say that. No, I've asked him for a quote before they start the work, right, and they haven't given us one, right? So, irrespective, before they start the work, if they haven't given us a quote, or if they've given us a quote, then it, what do we do if it's too expensive? Are you... No, I'm not talking to anyone else. With things a tad tense on the job, it's time to take Mark and Mitch off-site for a little inspiration. The beauty of barns is that though they weren't designed as living spaces, with imagination and creativity, you can convert them into spectacular homes. This barn in Cheshire is a good example of what can be achieved. Although it can be difficult to pull off, they've got the mixture between traditional and modern just right. What they've done here is less is more in design. And if you spend quite a lot of money on one or two bits and pieces with this house, they spent a lot of money on the kitchen. Mm. They spent a lot of money on actually the joinery throughout is beautiful. Yes. So that you can get away with spending a little bit less everywhere else. It's the bath. It certainly is the bath. Yes. Yeah. You know, sitting up there, it just, just sits so well in the room. It's not about the split level in no, here. No. It's about the fact that the bath is raised up and maximises the view. Yeah. Someone's going to walk in and be prepared and to pay top wax. Yeah, mm, yeah. Because it's so glam. Hopefully, this will inspire Mark and Mitch to realise the potential of their own conversion. But they've a long way to go. They've only got two months left to finish the whole job. And nothing on this development is going to plan. Putting in the septic tank and services proves more complicated and expensive than they expected. In fact, it cost almost four times their budget. And as soon as the plasterers arrive, it's clear that Mitch has totally underestimated the work involved. He's allowed just two weeks, but all the awkward spaces in the barn make it a much more time-consuming job than expected. Halfway through this development, it's obvious that their original schedule was totally unrealistic. Last time I came here, it was six weeks ago. How's it all been going? Oh, it's been moving on, hasn't it? Oh, fast and slow. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the terminology yeah. I can use. It's been a bit stressful over the last couple of weeks. Yeah. At the start of it, we didn't realise the problems that we we're going to encounter with the roof. The roof has been a major problem with us because we didn't Well, we, we, we knew that there was going to be a lot of work to be done on the roof. Um, yeah, but not to that extent. Well, no. How much time did you allocate for the roof? Uh, well, I think I put in the schedule about a week. And how long has it taken so far? This is the fifth week on it. Gosh. So, so why is it so overscheduled? We were hoping to rely on outside trades, but we're actually doing it ourselves. And it's the smaller technical bits that we're lacking in experience where builders, roofers would know this automatically, but we're finding out ourselves. We could have easily just thrown, you know, money and builders at it to get it done, but we wouldn't have known what they were doing. Whilst I admire the twins' eagerness to learn, it's now week 11 of what's supposed to be an 18-week development, and they still haven't sorted out their layout. We lost the utility room because Mark wanted to make the kitchen more open plan, and it just wasn't working into the into into the plan was it no and i still think the decision to open it up was the best decision for the room so you now don't have a downstairs loo so the only loos are in the three ensuite bathrooms which you have to access through each of the bedrooms yeah that's, that's correct. correct do you not foresee that that might be a problem yeah well yeah, yes it could that's be a problem and their layout problems don't stop with a downstairs loo or lack of one so with, you've got this great master bedroom with an ensuite bathroom. So that absolutely is completely the best solution to that space. But actually, the range of the space, you've got two really quite small bedrooms, both with ensuite bathrooms. Yeah, I'm concerned about the sizes of the rooms. And it's a concern that we, we have to address. And now is the time, I think, that you need to get the architect back, sit down with him, have a meeting, and discuss all the options, because going the wrong way at this point 
could really affect the long-term value in, for rental of this property. This is the problem, see, if we don't take advice when it's given and it goes wrong, then we've got ourselves to blame. And I don't think we're too proud to say, yeah, we have been making mistakes. We do need to take advice and act on that advice. But two weeks on, Mitch and Mark have decided not to take anyone else's advice. We didn't bring in the, the architect because we, we feel that because we've been working on the building so long now that we've got a feel for the place uh, on how things, things could go. We just went through a lot of uh, scenarios and we felt that the one we came up with is, in our um, estimation, is the best um, way to go. And to add to the confusion, three months into this development, Mark's latest idea is to lose a bedroom and create another bathroom. This would make it a two-bed barn conversion, which I think is absolutely mad. By constantly changing their plans, Mark and Mitch are getting themselves into more and more of a muddle. It's the en-suites that are causing the problems. I know you're adamant about you wanting to keep all the en-suites, but... No, 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 I'm not adamant about anything. I'm adamant about... Well, I'm not even adamant, right? I'm just getting very confused on, on what we are playing at. Well, I know it's something that's just got to be worked out, isn't it? Well, fine. I'm completely exhausted of trying to work things out myself. At the start of the project, you know, I thought I could carry it off, but it's it's becoming obvious now that, you know, we need to bring in somebody at, at this stage to sort it through. I think losing one of the bedrooms would be a huge mistake, especially at this stage. It means a lower rental income and redoing work they've already done. Unless Mitch and Mark can stop fighting and agree on their layout, it's difficult to see how they'll ever get this project finished. Mark and Mitch Parsons are in the middle of their first development, and it's a massive project. Converting the disused barn was never going to be easy. But getting their layout wrong at the start has turned a big challenge into a big nightmare. Mark's latest plan is to convert the smallest bedroom into a family bathroom. But this means there'll be only two bedrooms, which means less rent. So Mitch has called in the architect to get some advice. Leave the stairs, coming out of the dining room, mm. leave the ground floor toilet, prepare this, you know, put the stud walls up to make that a shower room. This project is due to be finished in a month, but until Mark and Mitch agree on the layout, there's little anyone else can do. The architect convinces Mark not to lose the bedroom and that they can squeeze a small shower in elsewhere. Fourteen weeks into the project and the layout is finally agreed. I knew you weren't going to listen to me, so... With David, David mm. coming up with a suggestion then. No, he's come up with a quite a good... Um... Uh, solution to it. With the layout finally agreed, the carpenter, builders and plasterers can at last get on with the job. But the project is a long way off schedule. And the endless changes of plan and extra labour mean that even though they're nowhere near finished, they've already spent all of the money. I know for a fact that we are knocking on our limit of, of the budget. I know we, we put on a... Um, uh, I think it's a 50k maximum to spend on it. I know we are hitting that uh, limit already. And that's including the uh, contingency as well. So, um, well, no, we're, we're 10,000. No, it's 45,000. No, it wasn't. Budget. budget was 50. No, 45,000 budget, 5,000 contingency. 45, that's the first I've heard it was 45. Well, you're wrong, because I wrote it down. <laughs> Why did you include the contingency in the 50,000? I can show you them now if you want, because I ain't messing about. I checked them. Well, go and get them then. I can go and get them. <clears throat> right, there. 43 for basic, 2,000 for landscaping, 45, 5,000 contingency. All right, 50,000 pound budget. Fine, sorted. 16 weeks into the project and the twins can't even agree on what the original budget was. I'm worried that if they don't get to grips with this, the project may never be finished. 
Developing can be really stressful, especially when it's not going according to plan. But Mark and Mitch have made this much worse by not really understanding quite what their roles were at the beginning. Project managing is one of the most important jobs on site. It's your responsibility to schedule all works in the right order and make sure that everything is carried out on time and on budget. It can be simpler if one person takes control, but if you want to share, then it's crucial you know who's doing what. Mark was supposed to manage the budget and Mitch the works, but the twins never really stuck to this, and the results have been disastrous. I started the project thinking that it could be more of a partnership on it, but as time went on, it was, it was quite apparent that it was, it was my project. Um, where the conflict came was when I did ask him to do something. If he, did, if he didn't want to do it, he, he wasn't going to do it, so I might as well just, you know, do it myself. It's been a bit tense, to say the least. Um, I've, uh, I'm probably not putting in as much effort as Mitchell is. He's always been a stickler for the detail, to, even on other projects. He's having to do it properly, but to the, to the extent where it's, it's become obsessive. With me, if it looks right and he's done okay and everybody's happy with it, I'm quite happy to do it and get on with the next thing. Finally, this development is showing some progress, but it's come at a price. The doors and windows have cost more than double the budgeted figure, and it doesn't stop there. Mark and Mitch have allowed two weeks to get the barn plastered out, but six weeks on and the plasterers are still on site. Just as things are beginning to come together, Mark and Mitch have a visit from Litchfield Council and discover they've made a huge mistake. Removing the wall to create Mark's dream open plan kitchen has created a massive problem. We've had to revert back to having a, an internal wall put in to separate the kitchen from the stairs. Uh, when I made the decision to keep it open, I didn't take into account of fire hazards in, in the building regulations. If I had taken that on board before, we probably would have had, we wouldn't have had the arguments we've had. We wouldn't have had the aggro which I've caused because of my uh, lack of experience. This development was due to be finished in one week, but it seems further away than ever. The budget is a distant dream and reinstating the wall means more delays and even more expense. Mark and Mitch have had to bring in extra plasterers to try and get the downstairs finished. They've been on site for almost 10 weeks. Mitch had allowed just two in his original schedule. I mean, it's moved forward a lot from when I was last here, which was actually over two months ago, but I've got to say, it's... it's considering it was meant to be finished two weeks ago, you are a very long way up, mm, aren't you? It's dragging on. What else happened? Uh, where should we start? Well, no, it's just been delay upon delay, mm. and we're paying the price now. Do you have any idea when you're going to be finished? Uh, well, I'd like to think that we're going to be finished before Christmas. But Christmas is just over four weeks away. Mm. Do you think yeah. this is going to be finished by then, do you? Definitely. Definitely. Oh, yeah, yes. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay, I mean, totally, totally being... unconvinced. Yeah, no, I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And this must be having a massive effect on your budget. Yes, um, 50,000 was the original budget. We've gone, we've hit 60,000 uh, and, and it hasn't been finished yet. What's the maximum amount you think you're going to spend? Uh, I would like to see a figure of around 80,000 pound, no more than 80,000 pound on it. So it definitely won't go over 80. That's correct. It's now 20 weeks into the project and despite working incredibly hard, the twins are months over schedule and thousands of pounds overspent. They have to get this project under some sort of control. Your site at this point has, has been through so many different stages and kind of turmoils almost. And I think it's probably the time to reflect on how things have gone wrong and work out how to make it go right to the end of the site. Mark, in terms of the budget, you need to work out what else there is to spend and where it's going to be capped. It's absolutely crucial you don't let this run away anymore. Every pound we're over, it concerns me because it's like a wrench from my own pocket. Well, <laughs> so, physically, it is. Yeah, it is, yeah. 
at the beginning of this project, it wasn't totally clear who was going to be project manager. You both kind of looked at each other, and it ends up being you, Mitch, didn't it? But who's going to project manage it from this point? Mitchell's still project manager, but I'm making sure he's not uh, forgetting the, the vital points or making the mistake, which I feel is going to be the uh, which is crucial to the project. Are you ever wrong? Um, so he's thinking about that. <laughs> that's right. Am I ever I'm wrong? Never wrong. Yeah. No. I was wondering if you were uh, wrong. I, in my view, I'm never wrong, but sometimes I may not be right. So. <laughs> it's now the end of November, and the barn still has a long way to go, but it is moving. The kitchen floors are being laid, and downstairs is slowly taking shape. The joiners have arrived to fit the stairs, and for once, things seem to be coming together. But the project should have been finished weeks ago, and every day is costing more money. And whilst Mark has been on site trying to save money, he has totally lost control of the budget. Welcome to my office. Uh, as you can see, I'm sorting through the paperwork to make sure that um, I'm on top of the budget. And um, to make sure that I know all the bills are being paid and all the paperwork's up to date, I've got this new unique filing system and it's called the floor. <laughs> we are running over the 50,000K budget, which I set, quite considerable. Um, we're knocking on the door of uh, around 80,000 pounds. Looking after the money and project managing a site at this scale both take a lot of time. But Mark and Mitch have also been on site laboring seven days a week. The sheer scale of this development is just wearing the twins down. Physically it's, uh, and mentally, it's been uh, very draining. And um, we've, been, uh, we've been working seven days a week. And I think that's one thing we didn't anticipate, how tired we're going to get. At the moment, with the, with the plaster's gone out, there's a bit of a sense of, you know, well, we're nearly there, but we've got, we've got a lot of work to finish off at the moment, especially downstairs. We've, we've not touched on it downstairs. Finally, three weeks after the whole barn was meant to be done, the plastering is finished. But they still have to second fix the electrics and plumbing. There's carpentry to be done, and all the rooms need decorating. Despite all that, Mark's decided that it's a good idea to fit the new kitchen himself. But before he's even got it unpacked, he discovers the first problem. The floor isn't sealed and it all has to go out again. Two and a half weeks later and the kitchen still isn't in. But Mark's discovered a bigger problem. The kitchen was originally designed for an open plan kitchen because we've had this wall put in at a late stage. And what was going in the open plan kitchen is now having to go in here. After much trying and five more weeks, Mark has to accept defeat and bring in a professional. Three days later, the kitchen's in. It's now early December and week 23 of the 18-week development. It would take nothing short of a miracle to finish this job off by Christmas. But then it's that time of year. I'm quite chirpy about it. I'm, I think, given the time, we got all the trades out, we need to get out of the way. We need to concentrate and get the other trades in to finish it off. Uh, I, I think it's December finish. It's quite an acceptable date. Actually, I do. Mitch and Mark Parsons are almost seven months into their barn conversion. They were meant to be finished three months ago. It's been an eye-opener for me because I didn't think this project would take this long. It would cost this much. We've gone over the £100,000, and I'm hoping that all the work and effort we put into it, and most importantly, the money we put into it, is going to be well, well worth the return. And thank goodness, with one final push, the barn is finished. Yeah, oh, and then that's really come together at the last. Gosh, this looks great. 
It's finally finished. You must be so relieved. Relieved is a word. I, I'm sort of happy it's got this far now. I'm great that you've kept so many of the original features. So you've got signs of the barn, stone flooring, and neutral elsewhere. Yeah. Mark and Mitch have transformed the shell of an old barn into a bright, airy living space. At one end of the barn, they've created a great living area. But they did have permission to fit another window here, and it was a shame not to. At the other end, the dining room has massive glass doors, giving it a great sense of space. And in between the two is the kitchen. This has really been the area that you've changed your mind a lot in is, is this wall because of the issue with building regulations, isn't it? Yeah, the wall was there as a fire break, and I thought I didn't take that on board, and I just said, oh, let's have a massive kitchen, let's take this out, let's take that out, and in the end, it was a total cock up, and it, it cost us a lot of money and a lot of time. Upstairs, the layout doesn't work quite as well. Mark and Mitch did lose the ensuite, but the smallest bedroom is still very small, even without a wardrobe. Second bedroom's better. But the ensuite takes up a lot of space and there still isn't room for a full bath. The master suite, though, is splendid. With a fantastic ensuite which has a separate shower and a bath with the best view in the property. This, uh, this is so glamorous. Like it. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Gorgeous. I mean, if there's ever going to be one feature in this house that is going to make someone rent it, it'll be this. This is going to be this one, yeah. One of the things I have noticed is that you haven't got any wardrobes in any of the three bedrooms which for sale is not ideal but for renting is is really quite crucial the most efficient use of the space is fitted wardrobes yes we, yeah we're looking at um built-in wardrobes after all their work i'm pleased the barn looks so good but it hasn't come cheap so how much did you actually end up spending on the project because you were going to spend fifty thousand. Fifty thousand, yes well this is due mr finance budget manager um, <laughs> I think we're looking in the round in the region of about a hundred thousand plus. Well, I thought it was about one hundred and forty. Um, well, I, I I haven't got the full figures, but we should be the <laughs> finance. Mitch and Mark budgeted just fifty thousand pounds to convert the barn, which was never a realistic figure. They allocated eight thousand pounds for all their materials, but they spent almost five times that figure. £38,580. They allowed £22,000 for fixtures and fittings, but spent nearly double that. They were hoping to do most of the work themselves and allowed £5,000 for labour. But they spent a massive £31,685. £5,000 for the kitchen became over £11,000. 3,000 for the bathrooms went up to 10,774. They cut the 2,000 pounds for landscaping back to just 500 pounds. And their 5,000 pound contingency fund just got swallowed up. Taking their total figure to 133,594 pounds. The twins were originally hoping for a rental income of 1,000 pounds a month. But with such a big overspend, they now need £1,500 to get their 6% yield. Good first impression, I must say. Yeah, that's, that's very nice. <laughs> and breakfast kitchen. That's good, that'll work for the family. I'm not sure what this is supposed to be. What a shame there isn't a view straight out of there. What a lovely, cosy room. Not a lot of room for wardrobe space in here, but... Um... Sure. For little people. That's just a perfect barn conversion bedroom, I'd say. Wow. You'd be able to sit in your bath and look out over miles of Staffordshire countryside. 
really a perfect barn conversion. It's, it's very, very high standard. I think I've had a super job of it. Three bathrooms in a three bedroom house is excellent. The bedrooms aren't very big, particularly, but you don't necessarily expect that on a barn conversion. It should be around a thousand a month. The rental value for this would be up to about a thousand pounds. I would hope they would achieve around the 1250 mark. Oh, right. That's quite, that's quite yeah. a relief. Yeah. <laughs> Are you pleased with that? Um, for all the money, yeah, yes, I am yeah. actually, because I was really panicking that all the money we're putting into it, we wouldn't get the return out of it. Mark is right to be concerned. They spent £133,594. If they only achieve the lowest rental valuation of £1,000, they will earn just 4.2%. And even the higher rental valuation will give them just 5.3%. Even though the barn looks great, this is a poor return for all the effort and risks involved. And there's more bad news. Now, I know you're planning on renting it, but if you were to sell this barn conversion with a total investment of 283000 how much would you hope that it was going to be worth? Possibly around the four hundred. dollars I'd be disappointed if it's below 400000 maybe four twenty five. They valued it at between three hundred and fifty and three hundred and seventy five thousand pounds Three fifty, three seventy five. That's still a good profit, so you shouldn't beat yourselves up over it. Oh, I am a bit disappointed in that. But the twins are determined not to sell. Instead, they're hoping they'll get tenants prepared to pay a premium. Looks very nice, this. Oh, wow, this is lovely. Nice. Proper kitchen. These beams are fantastic, aren't they? I oh, know, this is nice. Um, yeah. Windows make it look um, That's really light, light isn't it? yeah. So, uh, where would they put a wardrobe or a, or a thing for a... Wow, there we go, then. <laughs> we'll take this. Ah. <laughs> so the master bedroom is very good for the master and mistress, but uh, everybody else gets a bit cramped, I think. That's definitely sold it to me. <laughs> this bathroom is definitely sold it. <clears throat> from my point of view, to move into somewhere that's fresh and clean and beautifully done, I would very much consider this. Well, for me, there's probably not enough space up there. I've got two teenage girls. I think the, the house is so, so unique that um, I'd be prepared to work around yeah, the, the, the problems with because... those things. Despite the good reaction, none of the initial viewers end up renting the barn. Has this project seriously affected your relationship? There's been some quite deep arguments about it, and I can't see us actually working working together on a on another project. And what about you, Mark? I've said that I wouldn't do another one with him, um, but I don't know if that's because of the enormity of the job. What do you think you've learned from this? Um, the experience of, if you've got your own views, to get as much advice as you can, but at the end of the day, your own view is the one that you have to live with. And now I know that you don't mess about with bathrooms, planning, building stairs. control, stairs. And what do you think you've learned? What we've learned over the last um, six months or so, um, you, you couldn't, well, I was just about to say you couldn't You couldn't buy it, but we've bought it. <laughs> but, you know... Well, we don't know about barn conversion. You can put on a rubber sound. Yeah. Um, this project has been eight months of varying degrees of hell, and at times I doubted they'd ever finish it. Thankfully, the end result, despite being seriously over budget, is a huge success, which they should both be proud of. Next week, I'm in Lincoln with two women, determined to go it alone. You used to say you're always the right way in this area. It's your money and your house, and, and you should do what you think is best.